What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this custom backlit LED light box. You can also make it a sign like I did. This would be great for a game room, for a kid's room, even your business's lobby. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I built it. The first step in building this light box was building the frame. I just used some rough walnut I had on hand, which meant I needed to dimension it first on the planer, jointer, and table saw, but you could just as easily use a readily available hardwood like oak or select pine from the home center. The length of material you'll need will depend on the size of your frame, but a six foot long one by two should easily cover this type of build unless you're making a sign that's just huge. You've got a lot of options for what you want the inside of the light box to show, but I wanted mine to be a sign with my logo on it. My buddy Brad over at Fix This Build That inspired this build and he was nice enough to laser etch another piece of glass with my logo. So check out the card in the upper right corner to see his version of this build. He has a lot more detail on the laser process and his build turned out awesome. With the wood milled to size and the inside of my light box done, it was time to start cutting the frame. I cut the four sides of my frame to rough length through the miter saw, making sure to cut away any of the sap wood or any other imperfections. And with the pieces cut to their rough size, I started cutting the 45 degree bevels. When deciding on the final size of my frame, I made sure to account for the material that will end up resting inside the grooves inside the frame I cut in the next step. Also having some kind of stop block system is extremely helpful here since you can get each of the two lengths, one for the top and bottom and one for the sides, exactly the same. And as long as those lengths are the same and your bevels are accurate, you'll end up with a gap free frame. Once I had all four sides cut to length with bevels on each end, I did a quick test fit and they were looking really good. Next, I needed to cut the grooves in the inside of the frame to hold the piece of glass as well as the piece of quarter inch Luan plywood I'm using for the back of the frame. So remember how I said I accounted for the amount of material that will be inside the grooves when deciding on the dimensions of my frame? This is where that matters. When deciding on my frame dimensions, I chose a depth of a quarter inch on all the sides of the frame, so I set my table saw blade height to a quarter of an inch. Since my table saw blade's kerf or thickness is an eighth of an inch, only one pass was needed for the piece of glass to slide right into the groove. Next I cut the groove for the plywood, which required two passes to get the roughly quarter inch thickness of the plywood. I cut one pass, moved the fence over an eighth of an inch, and then made another pass and that gave me a quarter inch groove. With the grooves cut, I cut the plywood back to its final size on the table saw and miter saw, and then did a quick test fit just to make sure everything came together nicely. Next, it was time for paint. So I painted the back of the glass white, just like Brad did in his video to help diffuse the light. And I think it might've done a few too many coats. It ended up blocking too much light and the lights are really hard to see, especially in broad daylight. I also painted the plywood black just to give it a little nicer look. While the paint dried, I sanded all the pieces of the frame with 80 grit, 120 grit, and 180 grit sandpaper, and I just love the way this air dried walnut looks. It is absolutely gorgeous. To assemble the frame, I used screws rather than glue. Since I wanted to be able to disassemble this if the light strip ever stops working, the glass breaks, or any other changes need to be made, I could have plugged the screw holes with dowels, but again, that would have made disassembling the frame more difficult. And I actually kind of like the way the screws look here. With the frame assembled, I sanded all the corners flush, and then it was time for finishing. For the finish, I used Waterlox, who's also the sponsor of this video. And Waterlox is one of my new favorite finishes on Walnut. It just looks outstanding. Waterlox is a mix of tongue oil and resins, so it gives you the grain pop of an oil-based finish, but more protection than just a straight oil finish. If you want to learn more about Waterlox, I'll have a link in the video description below and applying it is super simple. I just wiped on two coats, sanded with 320 grit sandpaper after the second coat, and then wiped on a final coat. Next, it was time for the electronics. I'll have a link to the exact light kit I used in the video description and build article, but it really couldn't have been more simple. I went with a battery powered strip. Since my plan was to use this at events, I have a booth at such as craft fairs and maker fairs and that kind of thing. And basically I just drilled a hole in the plywood ran the lights through that hole and used CA glue to attach the lights to the inside of the back. On the back, I used CA glue to attach the little inline remote, then just used good old duct tape to attach the battery pack since it will need to be removed when the batteries need to be replaced. With the electronics installed, it was time for final assembly, which took a little finagling but did come together after a little persuasion. 
One tip when drilling the screw holes in the corners, make sure they don't run into the groove for the glass. Don't ask me how I know this. And here's the finished sign. As you can see with the lights on, it's pretty tough to see, but the really cool factor comes out when you turn off the lights. This particular light strip has all kinds of crazy color modes, and you can also just have one solid color if that's more your style. And again, I'll have a link in the video description to the exact light strip I used. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. This was a ton of fun. Also, a big shout out to my buddy Brad over at Fix This Build That. I could not have done this without him. That laser he has is super sweet. Definitely go check out his video to see how he did this. His frame was also a little more in depth. He had a full on light switch mortise into the side of the frame. It was pretty sweet. If you guys don't already, maybe think about subscribing. I have new project videos like this every Tuesday. If you wanna check out the tools and materials I used in this build, check out the Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. And last, if you wanna support me further, check me out on Patreon. I've got all kinds of awesome reward levels, including free plans, Google Hangouts, and more. Thanks again for watching guys, and until next time, happy building.